the faucet is an advanced project and shouldn't be done until you've completed the text and all the other projects that are required. It uses a swept blend. I'm showing the drawing here right now. And I'll go over to the part. And what we'll do is we'll run through the step by step using the model player like we've been doing. Roll it back to the beginning. This was created a long time ago, so you're going to see DTM 1, 2, and 3 on this video rather than top, front, and right. So our first feature, relatively simple. They incorporated the rounds, which is a good idea. They're really large radiuses. And they put a draft on here. And again, instead of using a draft, you can do the first protrusion and add a taper, make it one feature. And the next one, this is the complicated one. Show the dimensions. And each one of these represents a section. Turn off the shading. You can see the sections here. I think what I'd like to do is see if I can do it in the middle of this. I'd like to change my color. And I think I'll just go to a uh, more neutral color and see if that helps. Yeah, we can see the sections a lot better now. And then we have a variety of rounds. And you're going to see the rounds over here. <clears throat> a lot of them are floating out as individual features, whereas you can put them together as sets, that would be a much better way of doing it. Shelled out in here. And they added the rounds to make the spout here for the faucet. Looks like they created a cut, kind of an odd place to put it, but they wanted to use a data plane rather than offsetting one, so it's okay. And the protrusion. Another radius. Another radius to finish that portion off. They put a chamfer in here. Then they built up the bosses on the inside. Put a draft, put a chamfer in here. And then they patterned it. I think they patterned it. We'll see. Rounded out the inside here. Kind of a odd choice of selections they made. Not quite certain why it's like this. And at the end here they did add one of those lips again. Looks like they used the lip command twice. And again this could be done with a sweep. datum plane in here. I'm not sure why. Looks like um, we added these datum planes in actually just so that we could cut some sections. So that's why I've got so many datum planes at the end here. These are for the sections. Let's go in and see what type of sections we created. Yes. A lot of sections. So So we were using these two 
able to identify sections when we were doing the actual drawing. At each stage, when we were doing the swept blend, each one had a section for the geometry. So we wanted to do a section for the part so that we could identify that in the drawing. So, fairly complex part as far as the swept blend here is concerned. The rest of it is pretty much building geometry, not a big deal. Um, I think what we'll have to do is we'll have to go back up to the protrusion here. So, let's see if I can drag this. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't work, what I want to do is suppress the features. But I want to be able to see them in the model tree. So, I've got to turn on my model tree items. And I'm going to try it one more time. Well, it allowed me to do it. Let's see. All right. So, again, this can all be done. The base can be done with one command using a taper instead of a draft and a protrusion. And we have our second one here. Now, let's go in. And it's, this is going to open up an old dialog because that's how it was created. In reality, there is a command now that's available as a dashboard item, a swept blend. So when you use this, you'll use the swept blend here. It'll be a little bit different in the steps, but basically it's the same thing. For some unknown reason, when I roll this back, it will only allow it to go into the old style here. So. I'm going to show the trajectory. And the trajectory is a series of points in a spline. And uh, if you double click on the spline, it puts you into the point dialog here. And you can actually add or move any of these points to where you want. And these dimensions were actually added. If you add one dimension, the other dimension automatically goes in there. So you identify the height dimension here, the horizontal dimension will automatically be created. And again, you can change it to something more precise. Pop back out, and we'll go to the sections. And you'll see that here's the trajectory. And then we have section one. It's through that first point. Section two. Careful with the starting points. They must be along the same path that you want it to be moved when it goes along the trajectory. You want the starting point in the same place, otherwise it'll become twisted. There's our third one. Fourth, and now these are all given to us on the drawing and the set of images that are provided in the book, or I should say the download of the PDF. And a section is cut through everything, so hopefully that will be defined enough for you to be able to, this is a difficult project, but look through all the steps first over here, or all the images, we don't really give you steps. And I would also go into the swept blend online documentation so that you can uh, get a little bit deeper knowledge of that. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. So you can see that we're building a series of sections that are going to be connected. So you got the first, second, third, fourth one.
go back, add our shading with edges. Take a look at it. After that, we have the shelled out, but it wasn't shelled on this end. Just the only removed portion of the shell was here. So the person did not obviously want this end part, which is going to be rounded, to be shelled. A couple rounds. Protrusion. It's protrusion. They did a double circle. Looking for the other side doesn't make a difference. I'm going to use the data plane that they created, DTM5. I don't know why they used down here to cut a hole and they used up here to make a protrusion. Seems a little they're going to de use DTM5, then might as well have used it for both the original hole and this. A couple more rounds at the end. We had a chamfer here. And then we have the boss. Yeah, and this is very similar to lesson 18 in the book. Then we add the draft. Now this could have been done with the protrusion and uh, the taper built into it. Under the options here, you could have added the taper. Remember, this is a very old part. Let's go to the file history. See how old it is. 1996. We've been doing Pro Engineer books or PTC books. It was before Pro Engineer, actually. <clears throat> Since Pro E18. So each time we use the same project, sometimes we add or change a little bit. But in general, we keep it the same. So here, I'm not quite sure, certain why they did it this way. You should, could have just mirrored it, or you could have patterned it. And then they put in a couple of lips. And again, these lips, lip command is nothing more than a swept sweep using the trajectory as the edge as a trajectory and uh, as with the last project I went over the cell phone top you cannot redefine it unless maybe you turn it on so I'm not getting the edit definition to show the steps on that one using a sweep with the edge as a trajectory is easier at this point and we have a round and then basically what these are is in order to have the sections, we put through, I don't know why the round is here at the end, but we put through all these data planes. Let's take one. So it's going through each one of the sections that's there. There's the points that the sections go through. You'll notice I don't have any views either. I had to actually create a couple. 
previously PTC products did not have top, front, and right. They only had DTF 1, 2, and 3, and then you created your own views. Now, of course, they have the standard view. So when you start yours, you're going to automatically have all your traditional views here, default views. And there's your part. This will take a while to do, so take your time and use the online documentation for sweat blends.